Good morning. Hey, I'm George Howard, a.k.a. the Cosmic Tusk. And you are the Cosmic Summit, okay? And we're going to rock this weekend. We're going to have a tremendous intellectual festival, okay? I know of a lot of us have been to music festivals. We know how fun it is to see band after band after band that you love. This is an intellectual festival, and we're going to see all the people that we love to watch in our homes in person, and that's going to be tremendously special. But, you know, the greatest honor that I've had perhaps in my whole life, besides my dear wife Pam marrying me, is um, the honor to speak and to host the most intensely curious audience in the world. And I'd like anybody to challenge that if they could. I can't imagine a group of people that you could define more accurately as curious than the people in this room. And what does curiosity produce? It produces new information. And new information produces enlightenment. And that's where we're all heading. And you're at the absolute vanguard of that process that includes dramatic paradigm change that we're going to see and are in the midst of right now. Welcome to North Carolina, and welcome to Asheville, people. <clears throat> I went to a great conference in Sedona, Arizona last year that I know some of y'all attended too, and hat tip to Mr. Robert Dakota, a good buddy who put that on. And at that conference, I said, wow, this thing really has a vibe, you know? And uh, somebody needs to reproduce this vibe on the East Coast and see whether we can put this thing together. And people said, well, you're gonna need at least a year. I said, well, now you knocked that out in six months. I know that event management's tough and whatnot, but how could it be that bad? Whoo, I wish I had another six months, and some of y'all saw that last night, right? <laughs> but we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get this thing refined over time. We hope to do it again. I'm not gonna promise that we're gonna do it again just yet, because let's see how it goes, okay? But we'll talk about that in the closing address on Sunday. But out at Robert's conference, I saw the magic of bringing, if you will, and I mean this as a compliment, pajama researchers <laughs> together into that kind of crude term, but I like it, meat space, right? Meat space. I don't even know if people use it. It's almost like a 90s, 2000s term, but, you know, it's accurate. We spend so much time in the digital realm that it's a wonderful joy to see the people that you're seeing through pixels and messages and texts and tweets and all of that. And God knows we all make tremendous friends. I've got tremendous friends that I'm meeting for the first time in this audience. But it just doesn't substitute for meat space, right? But that's what we're going to have this weekend, a wonderful festival of people that needed to meet, that already, needed, already knew each other. We spend a lot of time jumping between YouTubes and podcasts and Google Scholar I hope, I think a lot of people here actually go and read the actual papers. I know the type, I'm the type too. Where you're both working the speculation side and working the science side, right? And trying to balance those two. Um, but you know, when you're a speculator and you're interested in these subjects, it gets kind of lonely, right? Can anybody agree with that? That within your own community, your own immediate community, and you, you can forgive them, but your best friends and family generally don't share our interests, right? <laughs> And, in fact, I, I might guess that some of them probably roll their eyes when we start talking about the black mat <laughs> and other such matters over Thanksgiving dinner, right? And, you know, you really can't blame them. But we are comforted by the confidence that we are on the right side of history and the right side of science. And here's why I think well, why that's true. Driving the other day, I heard the following quote when I was trying to find the words for this address. Heresy is a cradle, orthodoxy a coffin. I heard that on a podcast when I was seeking words and all of a sudden I heard, I was actually thinking about this address and I heard those words. And I said, that is absolutely ideal. Thank you, God. Heresy is a cradle orthodoxy, a coffin. Is there anyone in this audience that doesn't intrinsically understand that statement? That's what we know, and that's why we know we're right being pajama researchers. Right? So welcome to the cradle, you heretics.
Okay, give me a little call and response. Do you want to have some intellectual fun? Yeah. Right? Do you want to explore suppressed ideas supported by hard published data? Do you want to hear wild theories about Atlantis and things like that? Then this is your home. I had three goals for the conference. The first was to gather people from academia and social media, science, scientists and speculators, as, as I call them. And there's, you know, there's some intermix there, as you'll see, who hold heterodox opinions on matters of science and history and get them together with you all in a comfortable and entertaining setting at what I hope is an affordable price. I think that first goal has been achieved. The second goal was to provide, <clears throat> and this may seem a little shallow, but I think it's interesting. The second goal was to provide a place for um, YouTube and podcast speculators to be seen in person. Isn't it interesting that I almost find that the YouTubers and the podcasters, they're like bands that have millions of downloads and a huge fan base around the world. But hell, they never had a concert. Where do you go to see the people in person? You wouldn't stand for that with a band, right? You listen to that band, you know you can hear those tunes and hear those vibes and stuff, but you want to go see them in person, right? So we're going to try to bring some of that vibe and some of that joy to actually be in the presence of some of the people that you're fans of, right? So that goal seems to be achieved. The third was to begin a lasting and productive conversation between all the participants, the speakers particularly, and the speakers to the audience. And I tell you, amongst the speakers, that um, conversation is well underway, and it's been a joy to watch. Chandra Rikwama Singh's talking to Martin Swetman, Mark Young's, you know, talking with Ken Tankersley, Johanna's learning panspermia from Chandra, Chris now knows Mark. The snakes have Luke in the tangent cube. Dr. Ballard and Luke Caverns are now friends. Dr. Collins had dinner with Scott Walter last night. So you're seeing that kind of interconnection, and who knows what it will bring forth, right? And me, I've become buddies with Dr. Andrew M.T. Moore, one of the world's great archaeologists, and our keynote tomorrow. This has been a lot of fun seeing that develop. Funny thing about Dr. Moore, <clears throat> many, of, many, of, <clears throat> many have accused the Younger Dryas Impact authors of pseudo-archaeology. Has anybody ever heard the term pseudo-archaeology? Didn't exist 20 years ago, but now you hear it all the time. Dr. Moore's led key papers on the impact. He has been credited for a half century with the discovery of the earliest evidence for agriculture and domestication of animals at Abu Herrera 12,800 years ago. Ever heard that number? He is a dignified global leader in his field. Indeed, he is the recent past president of the Archaeological Institute of America, the world's largest association of professional archaeologists. What Dr. Moore is not is a pseudo-archaeologist, right? How in the world can they accuse the Younger Dryas team and yourselves by extension because you respect the science that he produces and others that produced in our group and other groups that he's not a pseudo-archaeologist. He's an eminent real archaeologist who discovered that at his own site that he'd been studying for 50 years that it still had something to tell him. And what it had to tell him was it was destroyed by comet fragments from space. What could have been further from his mind? And what could have been easier to reject after 50 years? But he embraced it because the data led him there. It's very, very admirable. And you know what? Dr. Moore may dismiss the idea of anything like in Atlantis or an advanced but undiscovered civilization pre-Younger Dryas, but so what if he disagrees with that? We still welcome him because we're not about uniform ideology, uniform thinking, and group think. We're about being on the cutting edge, and if you're on the cutting edge, there's going to be a diversity of viewpoints, and we'll sort it out as friends and family. The, <clears throat> that's really the point. If you have free speech and diverse viewpoints, 
you can actually learn something new. You can learn from the heretic. You can hear the baby from the cradle and maybe help the poor child, poor child of an idea, grow and flourish. And that's what we're doing. Finally, following Graham Hancock's Netflix special last year, Graham and others, including some of this room, have been subject to disgusting smears. I truly hate to say it, but I couldn't leave it out because I don't think anybody else would dare say it, <laughs> but I'll dare. The R word was even hurled at Mr. Hancock and a number of others, and they're prepared to label everybody in this room with that word. But it's such a bizarre accusation that my friends who were talking about, who kind of know this stuff and know you're into it, they, they picked up on something. They said, how in the world can they connect the R word with your studies? And I couldn't even explain it because there's nothing to it. But let me respond to these jerks with the truth. They are the narrow-minded. They are the prejudiced. They are the uninformed. They are what they project on us. Indeed, they are what I call... <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, they're what I call time bigots. They're temporal bigots. Hundreds of cultures, religions, and civilizations from every corner of the planet and throughout human history record a global catastrophe for us. And many of them record a precursor civilization. People speaking here have proven beyond a reasonable doubt using sophisticated modern instrumentation that was not available till our age that this occurred. Yet despite the evidence, our global ancestors are greeted by academia with a hearty and arrogant, wait for it, snort of derision. <laughs> they ignore the evidence, they ignore the truth because it is inconvenient for their own careers. The arrogant cliques dismiss the story of humanity with willful, willful, willful ignorance. They dismiss the most ancient origin stories of the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, the Hindu, the Chinese, the Greeks, the Romans. Those are some of the big boys there, right? But then there are hundreds of more cultures, literally hundreds around the world, like the Maya, the Maasai, the Athapaskan, the Algonquin, the Iroquois, the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Mayaska, the Quicha, the Tinim Naba, I'm getting to the hard names now, the Achakawea, the Araucania, the Cado, the Natchez, the Dakota, the Apache, the Navajo, the Mandan, the Pueblo, the Aztec, the Miztec, the Zapotec, the Tesalon, the Machachan, the Toltec, Quiche, Hashan, Darian, Papam, Musica, Amaran, Gararana, Moche, Nazca, Kawaya, Mbuti, Masai, Mandan, Tidalak, and Saisat. Those people said what we are saying today. And indeed, the Cherokee that lived on this land shared that story. Their history, our history, is no good to the arrogant mainstream. They dismiss the eyewitness testimony of humanity as nothing more than campfire stories. Our story and the campfire story. Well, we're, well, we're here today to take these ancient people seriously, to listen to them, and to provide data in support of them. And you know what? Ultimately, we're gonna win this thing. The paradigm's changing, and it could be frustrating, and it's surely gonna be too slow, but we've come more in the last 15 to 20 years than we came in the last 300 to 2,000, if you look at it that way. So we're lucky to live in a time where we can see a paradigm change. And when it changes, the mainstream can climb right back in that coffin and go to hell. Okay, after playing tough guy, I gotta add this, a little bit more tough guy stuff, right? There was an incident a couple of weeks ago at a public gathering with one of our speakers that got really ugly. If anything gets ugly, and I don't see that, those people in here in those types, but if anybody becomes ugly to any of these speakers, 
And it's a free speech zone, right? But free speech has limits, and one of those limits is going to be rudeness. If we happen to encounter anybody that's rude, they're going to get out of here. So you might as well get ahead of the curve and leave, okay? We're going to treat everyone with respect, um, even if you disagree with them. So I want to thank you very, very much. I love you all. I feel like you're my friends, even the ones I hadn't met, and I want to meet every single one of you. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to pick back up here. In a second. So now I'd like to bring your true host on. The fantastically intelligent, the fantastically talented, the beautiful actress, comedian, YouTube content creator, and someone we're going to see for years and years helping explain these matters in an excellent form of science communication. Mrs. Johanna James, all the way from London, England. Hello. Oh, you've knocked me mic out. Oh, no. Oh, God, I've lost my mic. Right. Rookie great, mistake. Great start. Great start. Thank you, George. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cosmic Summit. I can't believe we're here. This is incredible. We have been working, well, it feels like a year that we've been having nearly weekly meetings to try and pull this together. There's, it's been a bumpy road, if you've been following. We've had a few dramatizations. But I'm so excited to be here. And I'm going to do a couple of a uh, bit of housekeeping before we like dive in and, and get into it. So we have social media. If you also have social media, great, get involved. We want you to get involved. If we are going to launch this into an annual event and be a growing event that we can all every year come and meet each other and bring as many people as we can into the fold, we need your help. So if you could get involved by using the hashtag at Cosmic Summit, then you'll also have the chance to get on the screen to yourself. You can see maybe, I can't see the screen, so maybe we're not. Oh, no, I'm on the screen. There we are. But when I'm not on the screen, we're going to be rolling all of the social media. So take pictures, but please no flash photography uh, while there are speakers. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit like, you know, too much. Um, lunch is provided here today, but you don't have to stay and have it if you don't want to. You are welcome to go into Asheville or go and grab something. You've got an hour. Uh, if you are any longer than an hour, you will miss my talk. So please don't be longer than an hour. We've also got a, a barbecue mixer thing tonight, which will be here. And we're going to be eating with you. And afterwards, we're all going to be hanging out from 8 o'clock. I think we have the room until about 11 p.m. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be casual. We're going to be mingling. We're all going to, I'm trying to learn as many names as possible. I think I'm up to about 23. We're going to test my brain on that. Um, a big thank you to $50 Dynasty, Carl and Russ Band. They are providing all of the music today. So if you're loving the music, huge thank you to them for helping us out. Copyright is a thing. Um, social media. Oh, Telegram, yes. If you want to get involved, hundreds of you are already on the Telegram thread. Um, we're making friends and we're chatting in there. So in your emails, you should have a link. Or if not, yeah, go back through, check for your emails, or find someone who's already on the Telegram thread, and then they'll be able to help you join. Just download the app and join in there. And then we can stay friends after the event as well and keep chatting, and you can make your own groups from there. So that's cool. Um, I want to, we're running out of time, so I'm going to be a bit quick. I want to invite to the stage uh, Dr. Ken Tankersley, who's going to do the land acknowledgement, uh, because that's really important, and I didn't feel like it was my place to do so. So Ken, please come up. Thank you, Johanna. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that the land in which you're sitting on used to be a village, a Cherokee village, and this is the land of the Cherokee. Um, if I could have the land acknowledgement slide, please. Oshio Ogin Ali, Denatli Ulu Gueshti. Cha Aniuya, Cha Piqua Shawan no, Cha Michi Kinequa, Hoyana Oesta Idoda Wado, Hoyana Oesta Iowa Wado, Hoyana Oesta Uneklana Wado, No Wado, He Ado, Aho. We stand on the lands of the Cherokee, 
and other indigenous peoples whose ancestors have resided here since time immemorial. Indigenous peoples continue to thrive in this place, alive, strong, and growing. We collectively advocate, recognize, and support the sovereignty of indigenous peoples and respect their present and their ancestral ties to the land and their contributions to Asheville, North Carolina, and the United States of America. Wado Oginali. Thank you, my friends.